Masters of the Universe. A trap for He-Man. The twin moons of planet Eternia shone brightly over the weird peaks of the Mystic Mountain. On the summit of a mighty crag stood Skeletor, Lord of Destruction. Below, in the eternal darkness of the Valley of Osgore, a swarm of his slaves, the Shadow Men, toiled to heave a giant crystal of mentalite onto a flat rock. The Shadow Men scurried away as their evil lord stood in their midst and pointed his energy blade at the crystal. Now, He-Man, he exclaimed in triumph, I shall prepare a trap for you from which there will be no escape. Your strength may be that of ten men, but I have at my command a hundred times ten of the Shadow People. In the endless night of Osgore, you will be as a blind man, <laughs> and they will bear you down to your destruction. Skeletor's eyes glowed as he prepared to release his pent-up thought energy. A blinding bolt shot from Skeletor's energy blade, making the mentalite blaze with inner power. He aimed his thoughts at the crystal, which took them and set them speeding faster than light across the sleeping planet to Castle Greyskull. There, Tila, the warrior goddess, lay deep in sleep. As Eternia's red sun rose, Tila woke up. It was barely daybreak, but someone was calling her. There was no sound. But clearly in her mind rang the words, Tila, it is I, He-Man, who summons you. He-Man, most powerful of the masters of the universe, only summoned his companions in arms in times of great peril. Ordering her servants to make her horse ready, Tila seized Cobra, the power scepter, which was both energy weapon and the means of her power over animals. Within moments, she was galloping across the jaw bridge in answer to the summons. Generating a video lens with his energy blade, Skeletor watched as Tila's horse bore her swiftly across the land. When she discovers that it was not He-Man, but I who summoned her, it will be too late. And she is the bait to lure that muscle-bound meddler into my trap. Tila was fast approaching a rocky outcrop when her horse shied and Cobra glowed with pulsing light as it sensed danger. A vast shape, part lion, part reptile, rose above the rocks. Still clutching Cobra, Tila was flung to the ground by her frightened mount. Jumping to her feet, she faced the snarling monster. The eyes of Cobra glowed red, holding the monster's gaze. I know your kind, cried Tila. You are one of the Lyazard people. I mean you no harm. Go in peace. She lowered Cobra and, released from the energy scepter's magical power, the Lyazard turned away and was swiftly lost to view. While the land dropped steeply down to the ocean of Gnarl, Tila reined in her horse. He-Man's message sounded from directly ahead, from the far shore. Would she have to make the long journey around? She scanned the beach. There was no craft of any sort. Holding Cobra aloft, she beamed out desperate thought waves. Help me, He-Man! Which way must I go? Then a speck in the sky caught her attention. The speck grew bigger. It was Stratos, the winged warrior. I will bear you on your way, cried Stratos. A summons from the Lord He-Man to one is a summons to all. Tila dismounted and spoke to her horse. Return to Castle Greyskull. And as the horse wheeled and galloped obediently away, she wrapped her arms around the powerful body of Stratos and rose with him high into the morning sky. From a lone, rocky islet, a sharp-eyed sea-dweller spotted the speeding Stratos and his fair passenger. Through the dim caverns of the sea world, his warning echoed. Master! Master! Enemies! From his inner grotto, Merman, ocean warlord and servant of Skeletor, used aqua power to mind scan the air and sky above. Stratos! Tila! He hissed. They will be mine, and I will win favor of the Lord Skeletor. Better. 
I will bargain with my Lord of Destruction for a share of his power in return for my prisoners. The video beam of Aqua Power became a whirling column of water reaching high above the surface of the sea, forming a water spout. Then a second one, and a third. Soon half a dozen twisting columns of water reached to the clouds and the soaring stratos. Brace yourself! He cried to Tila. This is the evil work of Merman! Even as he spoke, the water spouts found him. Stratos banked and rolled as the whirling water spouts twisted him about. His feathers heavy with seawater, he was steadily losing height. Tila's fingers slipped on his wet body. Then, for a moment, Stratos was surrounded by the spiraling water, and Tila was snatched from him. Down she spun inside the water spout towards the cold, dim world of the sea. As the waters closed over the warrior goddess, Merman blasted a stream of zero energy from his weapon, imprisoning her in a frozen bubble of crystal clear ice. Quickly, she aimed Cobra at the ice, but the power scepter was made useless by the zero energy. She was weaponless. Your toy cannot help you now, laughed Merman. And my people are of the sea and care nothing for your magic scepter. Here you will stay to await the pleasure of my lord, Skeletor. Ignoring Merman's mocking words, Tila gripped Cobra and brought all her mind energy to bear on the distress call of the masters of the universe. And slowly, the cobra head began to glow. It grew brighter as dimly beyond the walls of her ice bubble prison, a dark shape loomed through the green darkness. Cobra flashed rapidly, and Tila felt her mind being probed by strange thought waves. A giant narwhal swam into view. Its small eyes gleamed, and its ivory tusk caught the faint undersea light. Tila picked up its thoughts. Who has imprisoned you? You, who are of the air? Your master, Merman, replied Tila. No master of mine, that creeping sea slug. I, too, am of the air. I, too, have warm blood, replied the narwhal. It backed off a short distance. Then, with a crash, it shattered the ice with its tusk, and Tila was borne swiftly upwards on its back. By a lonely beach on the far shore, Tila bid farewell to the narwhal. Beyond the beach lay dense forest filled with the sounds of wild animals. Tila pushed through the undergrowth. It would be a long and weary journey on foot to the other side of the forest. Cobra began to glow, and at the same moment, something big came crashing through the trees towards her. It was a giant stick, and it stood trembling before the bright glow of the red eyes of Cobra. You must carry me on your broad back swiftly to the Lord He-Man, said Tila, as the stag knelt for her to mount. In a moment, they were traveling faster than the wind through the forest. With a piercing shriek, a shaggy half-animal figure sprang in front, and the stag skidded to a halt. Beastman! cried Tila, holding up Cobra. Beastman flinched and turned his eyes away from the pulsing scepter, at the same time sending his stun whip lashing out at Tila. Swerving to avoid the flailing whip, Tila put her heels to the stag. With a roar of rage, Beastman raised his weapon again, but a charge from Cobra bowled him off his feet as Tila urged her mount to even greater speed. The savage beastman lumbered in pursuit for a few paces, then, seizing a low branch, he swung himself into a tree and continued the chase through the treetops. Steadily, Tila drew away from her pursuer. But what was that ahead? Through the trees, there was a glint of water, a lake over whose dark surface mists and vapors drifted, and in whose murky depths strange reptiles lurked. There was no way across. She would have to go around. Along the lake shore galloped Tila, while fierce eyes watched and clutching claws reached out from the water as she passed. 
Around the narrow end of the evil lake sped the stag and Tila. Not far behind, Beast Man raced through the branches, swinging his great bulk from tree to tree, hand over hand on the tangle of creepers growing through the leaves. And there, across a narrow arm of the lake, he caught a glimpse of his quarry. The forest reached out far from the bank on both sides. Clutching a loose strand of vine, Beast Man swung up and out over the lake. Tila glimpsed the flying figure and turned to aim an energy blast. The stag reared at the blaze of fire, and her aim went wide, missing Beast Man, but striking a tree branch just as his clutching fingers closed around him. With a shriek of terror, he hurtled headlong into the water. Instantly, the water was a boil as the creatures of the lake swarmed. Lashing out with his foot in the broken tree branch, Beast Man fought his way to the bank. Bruised and battered, he dragged himself clear of the water. Trembling with rage, he raised his great arms above his head and bellowed out his terrifying battle cry. The animals of the forest cowered at the awful sound, and the stag quickened its pace as the sound echoed through the trees behind. sunlight showed ahead. They were almost out of the forest. Once on the open plain, the stag could easily outstrip lumbering beast man. Tila raised herself and turned to see how close their pursuer had come. And in that moment, the stag lowered its head and ran beneath a low, overhanging tree branch. The branch caught Tila across the shoulders, and she was swept from her mount to land, stunned on the ground, while the stag raced on its way in terror at the approach of Beast Man. Beating his chest in triumph, Beast Man picked up the unconscious warrior goddess and slung her across his shoulder. Then he set off to seek his lord, Skeletor, and claim a reward for such a valuable prize. As Beast Man loped across the dusty plain of Eternia, a speck appeared high in the sky above him. Was it a bird? A cruising wind raider? It was Stratos, dried out and desperately seeking Tila. Now his sharp eyes easily picked up the movement of Beast Man far below, and he quickly saw that the limp bundle on his shoulder was the warrior goddess. Unaware that he had been spotted, Beast Man hurried on. Stratos banked away. There was only one person who could help Tila in her plight. Stratos used every ounce of air power in his body to reach He-Man before it was too late. He-Man, in his guise of the weakling Prince Adam, saw Stratos approaching. He raised his sword and cried, By the power of Grayskull! Changing into He-Man, even as he spoke. Quickly, Stratos told his story. This is the evil work of Skeletor, said He-Man. Where was Beast Man headed? The Mystic Mountains, replied Stratos. That means only one thing, said He-Man. The Valley of Osgor. Superpower is useless in that place of eternal night and the fiendish shadow men. I will need cunning and my faithful battle cat. Soon, astride the armored battle cat and carrying his battle axe and shield, He-Man was traveling swiftly across the rolling plains of Eternia towards the ragged peaks of the planet's high mountains and the smothering darkness of the Valley of Osborne. The sun was high in the sky when He-Man looked into the blackness of the grim chasm where Tila was held captive. deepest part of the Valley of Osgore, Skeletor stood before his prisoner, who was held helpless against a stone pillar by bands of pure energy. Welcome to the Dark Valley, Tila, warrior goddess, he sneered. Very soon, you may join me in welcoming our dear friend He-Man. It is too bad for him that he is all that stands between me and supreme power in the universe. Do not be so sure, Skeletor, cried Tila defiantly. But I am sure, replied Skeletor. His may be the mightiest body in the universe, but mine is the mightiest brain. 
<laughs> I have conceived a trap in which you are the bait. My slaves, the shadow people, are the jaws which will snap shut and crush him once and for all. A shadow man slithered out of the gloom and crouched low before Skeletor. My lord, the lookouts report the approach of your enemy. He-Man paused on the rim of the gorge. A winding track led down below the overhanging cliffs, which had kept out the light of day since the beginning of time. Once into that deadly shade, he was at the mercy of the Shadow Men. Their great strength was their ability to see in the dark. But so, like all of his tribe, could Battle Cat. Light meant agony to the Shadow Men, and this was their great weakness. It was with light that He-Man would defeat them. The sun had reached its highest point when He-Man unslung his battle shield. Holding it out, he caught the rays of the sun and sent them reflecting onto the rocks. Mounting Battle Cat, he urged the great beast down the narrow track, all the time holding the glittering metal shield to catch the sun and sending a dazzling beam ahead of him into the murk of the deadly valley. He-Man's war mount picked its way quietly among the boulders strewing the path. But to the super-sensitive ears of the Shadow Men, the silent steps of the huge cat were adequate. At a gesture from Skeletor, they took up their positions. Gripping crude clubs, they ranged about the stone pillar. Others lined the bottom of the gorge on either side while the remainder perched high up in dark ledges and crevices, ready to leap down upon their intended victim. Skeletor cast a glance around the final placing of his slaves. All seemed in readiness. Like stars in a black sky, the eyes of the Shadow Men gleamed in the darkness. The sounds of the approaching victim drew closer. Skeletor looked again. Two larger, brighter stars shone out. A low, rumbling growl came from their direction. Then a great blaze of agonizing brightness leapt at the Shadow Men, and He-Man was upon them. In the terrifying brightness of the sunlight reflected from He-Man's shield, the Shadow Men tumbled, screaming from their hiding places among the rocks. Fighting each other in their desperation, they bore down upon the Skeletor where he stood beside the captive Sheila and the glowing mentalite crystal. Back, you cowardly reptiles! screamed the Lord of Destruction. Perhaps this will help to put some fighting spirit into your miserable hearts! And raising his energy blade, Skeletor sent bolt after bolt of crackling power darting among them. But now, added to the pain of the dazzling light, came the screams of Battle Cat. Mighty paws slashing right and left, the great cat bounded to the attack. Hold on, Tila! cried He-Man, as the Shadow Men parted before him, leaving the prisoner unguarded. And you, Skeletor, prepare to meet your fate! Skeletor again raised his energy blade, but the scrambling shadow men jostled about him in panic, spoiling his aim. He stumbled and was instantly borne to the ground. He struggled to his feet in time to see the precious crystal of mentalite about to be swept from its flat rock, and with a supreme effort, he caught it as it fell. Tila and He-Man watched as the blinded Shadow Men blundered into their evil lord, who held the crystal above his head, out of reach of the struggling mob. Then, suddenly, it was knocked flying from his grasp to smash against the black rocks. In an instant, the pent-up energy in the crystal was released, sending a massive shockwave to the very roots of the Valley of Osgore. The overhanging cliffs split from top to bottom, and the sunlight blazed down. The rock pillar dissolved into fragments, setting Tila free. As the dust settled, the last Shadow Man had vanished. Mounted on Battle Cat, He-Man and Tila prepared to leave the ruins of the valley. But as the last of the dust cloud disappeared, there was revealed a dark figure standing amid the shattered rocks. Skeletor raised his energy blade. 
Once again, your meddling has cost me dear, he cried. But no one escapes unharmed from an encounter with the Lord of Destruction. A bolt darted from Skeletor's weapon, but swift as it was, He-Man was swifter. He leapt to the ground, battle axe swinging ready, and the energy blast passed harmlessly over his head. A second shot was deflected by the shield, and He-Man rushed to the attack. Bolt after bolt crackled harmlessly on the shield while Skeletor backed into a crevice in the rock before the gleaming axe. Once again, Skeletor fired. Once more, the powerful battle shield caught the force of the bolt, but this time deflected it to strike the rock face above the crevice. With a rumbling crash, the rocks collapsed, covering and concealing the crevice and Skeletor. As He-Man and Tila rode out of the Valley of Osgor, the rays of the sun were penetrating into nooks and crannies which had never had until now known its warmth. The poisonous mosses and lichens which draped the black rocks shriveled and died. Tila pointed to a spot high above them. The collapsing rocks had released a spring of clear water, and now it cascaded into a glittering stream to form the beginnings of a river on the valley floor. Sun and water, said Tila. They will bring the grass and trees and flowers. Soon, Osgore will be as fair a spot as any place on planet Eternia. Yes, replied He-Man. When evil is defeated, good can flourish for the benefit of all.